Hey, this is Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Um, you may know me from my YouTube channel. I have a, um, a fairly medium to large following on my uh, YouTube show, which is essentially uh, about guitars and about hats. Um, actually, uh, I run a hat shop called JJ Hat Center in New York City since uh, 94, 25 years. It's the biggest, oldest hat shop around. It's 100 years old. So I'm kind of an expert on both both fields. I'm also a pro guitarist um, since the mid 80s. I'm 53 now. And um, what else? I'm a guitar teacher. Uh, I've uh, had various students from uh, second grade all the way up to uh, old folks like me. Um, and a lot of times they ask me, what's a good starter guitar? Or the parents ask me, what's something you recommend that's inexpensive but not a piece of you-know-what? We call it a POS in the business. Um, short for pause, positive, right? All right. We know what that is. That's when you go on Amazon, you see a hundred different guitars for a really cheap price. You don't know which one is good, and you choose one, and it comes, and you're really underwhelmed. Um, this was not the case uh, with my Ashthorpe. Uh, the Ashthorpe guitar uh, came to me was uh, $119 with a very big set. Uh, it came with a very heavy Cordura nylon gig bag, which was, it's, it's heavy, it's very heavy. It's like, a, I don't know if you know Cordura, it's like what they make tents out of and stuff, that super heavy duty stuff. Um, came with a guitar strap to wear, it came to wear it, you know, to stand up. It came also with a uh, very decent guitar cable. And, um, you know, I'm a pro player, and I know what you can use and what you can't. This is called a molded cable, and it's actually pretty reliable. Uh, the one downside to these is that you can't, you know, really do a lot of stuff like changing parts and stuff. But uh, in the 50 years of my life, I've never actually done any cable surgery. Generally, you know, a cable, you just get a new one if they fail. And uh, if you treat them well, they last years and years and years. So. Okay. Here's the deal. You gotta take your guitar out of your uh, out of your box. And Ashthorpe makes a few different models. They make something called the full size dreadnought, which is what I chose. It's the biggest body and will probably give you the loudest sound, the strongest low end, the strongest bass, you know, the big bass that you can feel projecting through your body. Um, but it's also a bigger body, which can be uncomfortable for some folks. A dreadnought. They make the same um, type of idea in a cutaway body. Cutaway is kind of like my Les Paul. Cutaway shape is where instead of being, excuse me, instead of being rounded here, they cut it away. The idea is that you play, you get more access. You could get to higher frets because of the cutaway. It also makes it lighter, it makes it thinner. There's uh, cutaways in the back and stuff, you know, things that give it contour and basically reduce weight and size. Uh, they do make a cutaway version, and they make something called a thin line, which is the smallest body. The thin line essentially is thinner, like an electric guitar. It's just not as wide as the dreadnought. The dreadnought is uh, slightly thicker. I'm going to take it out of the box now. Okay. Now this is the blue burst version, electric acoustic, full size dreadnought. Let's see if I can get a little better light. It's very sunny today in New York. The sides have a, almost like a candy apple blue look to it. Uh, the pictures don't really do it justice. You gotta see it in person. I don't know if you've ever seen a candy apple blue race car. Just, that's what this looks like, the sides and the back. Okay. The headstock and the neck are almost like navy blue lacquer. They lacquer it here. You see that? And instead of a big gold or white logo, it's kind of like laser etched, sort of tone on tone. You see that? So classy. Has a kind of a Martinish look. Dreadnought, Martin, kind of silhouette. You see the silhouette? You can get it in plain wood, natural, it's called, or something a little darker. Looks like a 
darker, rich wood that's, you know, aged and gotten a suntan. They call that brown. They have something called sunburst. Sunburst is similar to this color, like my 1972 Les Paul. This is a 72 Les Paul Deluxe. It's, uh, it's pretty valuable, and it's worth, uh, you know, a few thousand dollars. I'm going to say at least $3,000 on the vintage market, and uh, I'm still buying this guitar, you can see. Um, I buy a lot of expensive instruments for my own uh, pro playing, and uh, ESG, many thousands. Um, I also have guitars that are inexpensive, like this Squire which is, uh, this was a $149 guitar, and it's incredible. I'm the type of player that uh, I buy what I like, despite the price. Uh, if it's a $3,000 guitar, uh, $500 or $100, it doesn't matter. I get it if I like it. Uh, price is sort of secondary. It has to, has to speak to you. Now, the uh, Ashthorpe, uh, I was ready to be... Uh, underwhelmed, uh, as you generally are when you're getting a lot for a little. Um, when I saw this uh, preamp here, all these features, I said, okay, this guitar cannot sound great at this price. Well, guess what? Yeah, the thing sounds incredible. You have uh, bass, mid-range, treble, presence. Okay, bass is the bottom, the boom, 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 treble, we know what it is, the higher stuff, higher string noise and stuff. Presence is a super treble. It's the highest trebles like cymbals and pick noise and all that you want to lower the hiss and all that kind of very super high parts. It's like super treble. Under that is treble. Mid range is between treble and bass like the regular area. Bass is the bottom. So what you could do is make a shape with the EQ like a smile, make it flat, and these different EQ patterns give you different sounds. You've also got a master volume for your volume, and you've got the battery goes in here, it comes out easily. If it fails, you know, one day you just pop it out, put a new one, and it literally can take like three seconds to change this battery. Bam. Um, here is a, uh, a tip for everybody the battery comes shrink wrapped. When I first tried it, I thought it was a dead battery. Uh, then I put my reading glasses on, and I noticed that, uh, yeah, they shrink wrap it so that the, uh, the battery doesn't explode inside the guitar in case it's, you know, there for a long time, I guess. I don't know. It's just for safety. So unwrap the battery, put it back in the same way, okay? You can test the battery by pressing this button. It's a battery check button. If you see it light up, you know you're good, okay? We'll lighten up. Okay, that's the stock battery they gave me. It does come with a battery. It came with this guitar strap too. Okay, the guitar strap, you're gonna hook it on right here. It's gonna be a little difficult to get it through, but that's the idea so it doesn't fall off easy. Once it's in, that's it, it won't fall off. Put it through the other side, okay? Adjust it, it's probably gonna be a little too long for you, so use this belt thing, adjust it, get it as long as you need. Basic rule is, down by your knees is cooler. Up here is easier to play. You know, it's closer to your hands, your eyes and stuff. Down here just kind of looks cool. You know, so strike a balance. All right, now we've gotten to, uh, the guitar is out of the box. You've got your strap on. You ready? How do you tune it? Strings are to come loose. They don't want a lot of tension on there. When you tighten up the strings, don't tighten one side first and then the other side. Tighten them evenly. What I do is I tighten them all slightly, a little bit, a little bit. I tighten the ends, I tighten the middle, so I don't do one side because you don't want lots of pressure on this side and no pressure there. So just tighten them a little bit, a little bit. You're going to go to, if you don't have yourself an electric guitar tuner, I have a tuner. Um, the one I have is made by... Uh, Peterson, it's called a Strobo Stomp HD. That's an expensive tuner. You guys can get a electric tuner for $20, $30. Um, 
There's a company called Kugo, K-O-O-G-O, -O, that makes a fantastic tuner. Um, I know another company called um, Click, Click something. Oh, I forgot what they're called, but the Click tuner is really nice. So I'm going to say Kugo makes a really nice product. If you want something in a $20, just go to Reverb.com. Um, look for guitar tuners and go lowest to highest. You'll find a guitar tuner for you know, $20, $25. You plug in to here on one side with your cable until it clicks all the way in. Okay. The next thing you want to do is always drape it through here. Okay, so plug it in, drape it through here. Don't skip that step. Okay, this is something that all guitarists do. We put a guitar cable through there, so it's leaning right there. So that way if it pulls, it pulls here, it doesn't pull the jack out of the guitar. What happens is there's those little screws, little uh, hex nuts become loose, and the input jack gets loose, and then you have to get it tightened up. There's a special tool that tightens it called a bullet tightener or something. I have one because it happens all the time if you don't do this. So tuck your, your cable in. The other side goes into the tuner. Okay. Put it in. What you can do now is go online, go to YouTube, and you can press something called guitar tuning or E standard guitar tuning. You're going to get an E note like this, and then an A. So what you want to do is get an E. So if that's your E, so let's say I get this. And we're going to bring it to match that E. You could do it by ear, or you could use a guitar tuner. There's generally a light that goes like a needle, and then when it's dead center, you know you're tuned. Okay. So it'll be like, you know, red, 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 green, 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 and you're in tune. So always tune from low to high. Okay, if you go too high and you miss it, start down at the bottom again and tune up. Never tune from high to low. Okay, go down to low. Go down to up, excuse me. Okay, now we're in tune. We tuned all the strings. Tuning your guitar is something you're going to have to look up if you don't know how to do it, okay? So you're going from here, remember we tucked the cable, we're going to plug into our amplifier now, okay? You give it a little bit of volume, you try your amplifier at zero, never, never go loud, start it at zero because some of these things are just incredibly loud, you blow your ears out. Start it at zero and ease it up. If you're not getting anything by one, there's probably a problem, turn it back down. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm in the amp. All right, now, here's my EQ here. Volume, wheel, bass, mid-range, trebles, and then presence. That's your super trebles. So you could start at everything right in the middle at number zero. There's a center detente, which means when it gets to the center, it clicks. Hear that? There's a center detente. Everything's flat. When it's flat, that's the natural sound of your guitar, which means they're not adding any bass treble. This is just normal. They just raised it up a little. So here's your ash thorpe now. Okay, sounds a little thin, let's add some bass. Hear that? Little mid-range. We want to turn the presence down because it sounds a little too tinny. Let's bring it down. Okay, if we're losing too much clarity, we bring it up. So it like, sounds good to our ears. You could even work each one. Start flat, mess with your bass, mess with your mid. 
it's good for me. What I generally do is I keep it flat and I add some bass boost. I generally crank the bass to the top. And I work with my presence. So there's not too much tin or anything. It's going to respond to the way the amp is set. My amp is set up now for an electric guitar, so there might be too much treble. It's really no reflection on the Ashthorpe, it's more my settings. So my amp is not flat. Alright, so from here, um, let's see, let's take a little bit more treble off there. Just a touch of reverb and delay. It gives you a little bit of, uh, it smooths it out. It also gives you more drama too, I think. Let's try a pick. We'll get more tones, different tones out of a pick. Also like a phaser. Here's a uh, an earthquake or grand orbiter phaser. It's set very slow.
out. Super cool right out of the box. It even comes with an Allen wrench. It comes with an extra set of strings. A cable, a strap, a really nice heavy duty gig bag. And uh, the preamp section with this uh, easy pull out battery. It's really, it's totally pro. It works like a champ. Um, I'd suggest this to almost anybody if you're going on tour and you don't want to bring your uh, you know, $10,000 guitar. This is perfect. I mean, it's, it sounds great. It seems really tough. No problems anywhere, especially the tuners seem nice. They're holding. No slipping at all. It's another thing. When you get a new guitar, a lot of people like to stretch the strings. Now, stretching is something you're going to have to do when you first tune up. What I do is I generally just grab it and I pull back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down. Turn the sound off. It'll go lower now. It flattens out, but you just pull the slack out of it. So there you go. Um, stretch your strings. Every one of these strings that come out of the factory are going to need good stretching. What I just did there, I'd say do each one five to ten times. Stretch them out. Don't pull it and break it. Just give it a good up wiggle, side wiggle, and an up wiggle. You could do it here, you could do it here. You gotta stretch your strings. That's a, a good pro trick. Um, 